This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, Joe here from Rufio. We got Brandy B back on the channel once more. This time he's done well at Nats. Look mad. Mad. Can't do well at a regional, but go to Nats and it just all comes together, I guess. And literally missed out basically on tiebreakers, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like it was um it was seven three, so it was unlikely. But a few seven threes got in. Yeah, a, a few squeezed through. It was like if any one of my matches a, a tiny little thing had changed, I would have topped. Is what it's it's how it is, how right? It is. But on the plus side, you did get the additional prize that they were doing for yes. top 128, yeah. was it? Yeah, top 128, they got the mat and the sleeve still. Which Hems has got an absolute swag mat here. It's really nice, to be fair. Yeah, it's, it's actually clean. grown on me. I wasn't sure about it at first, but um, yeah, it's actually really nice. It's pretty clean. So what were you playing anyway? Uh, so we were playing 60 card Punk Theory and just absolute pile. I was like, I don't want to decide what good cards to play. I'll just play all of them. Play all of them. And you know what? It actually kind of worked. Yeah. Well, it worked out well enough, <laughs> yeah, didn't it? Yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. Well, before we do get stuck into the profile, guys, if you're looking to pick up any Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, check out channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. Link in the description. Use the code RUFIO15 for a 15% discount. Anyway, let's get stuck in. Okay, so take us away when you're ready. So, uh, start the punk engine. We've got three zoom in, three ogre dance, three foxy, the one Sharakusai, the one Dino. Because I'm playing 60, there was no harm in maxing out on everything. Mm -hmm. We're playing the Sharakusai in case you've just opened Foxy Tune. It gets you to Rising Cut, which gets you to Dino and zoom in. Yep. So it's still the Chaos Ruler into how the combo. Uh, play Most of this deck was trying to make everything as. Like make every live uh, hand as live as I could. Yep. Uh, so for Therians, we've got two Regulus. Sorry, three, three Regulus, two Lily. Uh, we've got just the one Bull and the one Duke. And uh, I, I had it flipped the other way around where it was um, two Regulus, three Lily for the longest time, but it was just way easier to get Regulus out because you can just get a Jet, jet Synchron off of Hulk. And if you don't need the extra extender to get into a Dagger or your Calamity combo, you just. Uh, Equip it to the Regulus. Yeah. And then I was playing the Reaper, and I think maybe I should have been, because um, Despia was a big problem for me, and I didn't have any real outs for the Mirror Jade or the Kryatus, other than swinging over them, but that's not great. Mm -hmm. uh, but Bull was really nice, just helped me clear boards. Like, Regulus equipped with a Bull is just such a huge threat, because you're fracking popping one of their things, and you're probably going to force it to go through. Like, I, I, I had to now a skill drain doing that exact same thing. <laughs> or, uh, not sorry, a skill drain, a uh, summon limit. Yeah. And then the Duke, uh, it didn't really come up. I thought I might as well play it. It was a case of, it's a psychic, so I can equip one of the psychic uh, punks if I need to go for game. And it's also a light, so if you mill it off ruler along with any other Therian, you just grab it and it gets you into that engine. Yeah. But it didn't come up that much, to be honest. So I think that's it's probably going to get cut for the Reaper. Yeah. Uh, and then we got a few more little engines. So we have the free Sangan and the one Alboria. Fucking Sangan. <laughs> Back in the year again. card was actually legit. Like, every time I saw it and um, I didn't have a better normal summon or I had the e tally, it was just insane. Because, um, literally, um, uh, so if you have e tally plus Sangan, when you have Ruler Zeman up, you just normal this going to the Hulk. It chain blocks your Hulk and it either adds the Arborea as an extender, or if you don't need the extender, you just grab an Ash or a Veiler as a yeah. hand trap for next turn for free. It was honestly so good. Um, and like I was saying before, it's like just trying to make as many hands live as possible. Yeah. Because I'm playing 60, I can't afford to just be playing like a bunch of jank that doesn't work. Together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I need combos right, to go through. Uh, we're also playing the Souls package. I think two and two is the correct ratio. You see either of them off a ruler, you get to grab it. And yeah. then um, this or Sangan is the easiest way to get into Herald. And the cute thing about Herald is uh, if it gets sent for like it's negate or whatever, you get to grab that from deck for next turn's follow up. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, and then we just got some random other, like, just good tuners. We have the Quick Draw Synchron, we have the Jet Synchron, we got uh, Plague Spreader and the Strudo. Quick Draw's interesting. Uh, yeah, so I have a little tech that you'll see later. But um, the idea of this was, obviously, uh, it needs to be used for a Synchron, um, uh, or it needs to be used for a Synchro that requires a Synchron. So yep. it's literally just a Gant Hulk, or as a generic extender for Link plays. Yeah, yeah. But also, um, you can pitch Therians. The big problem with Therians, if you just open a handful of them, uh, your hand's just kind of dead. You need a way to get one in grave, and this was a good way to do it. Yeah. Obviously, Jet Synchron Plague Spreader just busted. 
a Distrudo 2. Um, I was trying Shooting Riser, but I'm not playing the Brave Package, and you can't get into Shooting Riser in this deck at all, really, other yeah. than Distrudo, so eventually You'd be forcing it. So again, this is just a, an extender I can mill. Like, I, I want as many of my mills to be good. And seeing in hand isn't terrible, because it's an easy pitch of like, the Foxy Tune, or the Quick Draw Tinker, however. Yeah. Uh, and then, last two random one we got the Scythe and the Snow. Just, yeah. Broken cards. Yeah. <laughs> snow, snow in this one especially, when you mill so much, is really good. Uh, for a hand trap lineup, we were running Triple Nib, Triple Ash, Triple Baylor. Um, I was fiddling around with which ones to play. Uh, for the longest time it was Crow instead of the Nib. But in my mind, um, I was more scared of Sword Soul. So I swapped out the uh, Crow for the Nib. And in both cases I wanted um, to play more hand traps that I could grab off of Ruler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously Ash is just really strong at the moment, so I feel like you should just play it. I and think people don't respect this as much in game one as well. Yeah, yeah. And then also Valor is for the um, something of how going Selene combo to get yeah. into her access code. And yeah, Nib Valor is just like the best combo in the game, so if you get to play both. Uh, moving on to spells, we've got Triple Colosseum, Triple Argyro System, we've got the One Charge, that's our theory and lineup for spells. And again, it's like 60 cards, so I can afford to max out. Yeah, yeah. You really want to mill this, because again, that's another way into your engine. Charges if you've opened like pure Ethereum. you want to see your punks, so you'll be searching this off Lily or even like sending it to Grave and Grand back with our gyro system. Yeah, and then I was playing the extra terraforming, but <laughs> funnily enough, it was like too many in hand. Like, you don't want that many Ethereans in hand, you want as many ways to get them into Grave. Yeah, um, and then rather than going like one terraforming to Colosseum, I'd rather play free Colosseum, because if you mill our gyro system and Colosseum, oh, you, you just get to grab the Colosseum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the so it's like an extra copy anyway. I, I think that made more sense. Like, uh, Droll doesn't hit me too bad, but it's like, if I can afford to not get Drolled, then yeah, 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 yeah. I, I won't play the terraforming. Uh, extra spells, we got the free Italy and the one one for one, which is just insane extender. The fact that this is at free is just insane. It's fucked, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, one for one's really cute. It gets you into the Jet Synchron or it gets you into Magician Souls. Yeah. So yeah. this can actually That's fix your hands. I only saw this once, and also um, there's another way to pitch a Ethereum. As it's also before. a massive target for Ash. Yes, 100%. Like, if you just lead with this, they think you're playing Plant Mate. Yeah. And they will just Ash. They will just hit. Um, so a few more spells got double tuning. So the fear of this was Jet Synchron in hand is actually kind of broken. Like uh, if I just summon it, link it off a link rebo, that's how on its own. And also I'm pitching Ethereum if I need to. Yeah. It also mills a card, it's not once per turn. So um, I was like, if I open both, I can search Jet Synchron and then the Quick Draw Synchron. Or if I just open one, I have the choice. And then the mill, I might get lucky. Yeah. I never actually saw this. Instead, I just saw Jet Synchron. Like, every other hand, it felt like I was wearing <laughs> Jet Synchron again in 60 cards. Or maybe that's why I did well, I don't know. But I think the theory was correct, just for 60 cards. And then uh, the last, like, consistency spell is just the Foolish. Yeah, it's literally anything you need, right? Just, uh, just anything. Um, because you're not playing Brave, so I don't get in charge of that. Yeah, just everything else. Uh, and then the last few spells, we have Droplet and cool by super powerful uh, it was a choice for me from playing um, 9 hand traps and then the droplet or just playing 12 hand traps but I thought Droplet was worth it. Um, the times I saw it going second, it definitely helped. Um, it's not even terrible going first either. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even going first. Like worst case scenario, you, you, you have to use it as your like last discard for Foxy or whatever or a Jet Synchron, but it's fine. And Cool Buy's just like every deck should be playing Cool Buy. Yeah. Like no question. Even if you're just using it as back row, it's so strong. Uh, and then the last card in the main, we got there eventually. Mad. Uh, Fury and Cross. So um, yeah, just uh, negate. Or a banish if you have a Therian. If you have a Jaro Sitting on Grave, you get to use both. Yeah. I've noticed that lists are playing the other Therian track, Therian Stand Up, and that's basically like you reborn a Therian and then you equip one from Grave, or if it's in Grave, you can equip one from Grave for one on the field. Um, which is probably better in retrospect, but I didn't even consider it at all. So yeah, but that's that's something to uh, I'll go over later when I'm sure. talking about changes. Uh, we'll move on to the extra deck. So we're playing the the calamities as well as the side. Yeah. And the whole idea is this is Plan A, and if Plan A doesn't go through and we have an extender, we can just make a dagger. Yeah. And then also um, like if you just see Sangan or you just see Plague Spreader, that is uh, the side lock on its own. Sure. Like. Effectively, 
Um, for Scythe, it's the Scythe in the main and Dagger in the extra and Calamities, it's literally just the Calamities in the extra. So I thought I might as well play it, there's no reason not to. The way I did it was um, I'd go through the Punk combo and if I had an extender I would link off the Xeomin and the extender for Halk, bring out Plague Spreader, make Baron and then bring out the Plague Spreader and the Chaos Ruler again. So you yeah. have Baron protecting it and if I didn't you'd just go straight for um, you just go straight for Xeomin, Ruler into the Hulk, and that would keep the Plague Spreader for next turn because it'll still be live. Sure. And that, of course, would be on top of any other against like um, Heralds or um, uh, Furian Kings and whatnot. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, other synchros. We've got the Psychic Punisher. God's crazy. Uh, Baron, yeah. Uh, and the uh, Ruler. So, yeah, this this card is insane. Apparently, um, Mirror Jade effect to blow it up gets through. Which yeah, is lost me my last match. Yeah, very disappointing. I hadn't heard yeah, about that, but it's really weird. Really weird, but it kind of makes sense in retrospect. Um, but the card is so good. Like, if you just make this big against Sword Soul, they don't have a real out. They yeah. have to banish a lot off of like a desires and make a chain. Yeah. But then if you have this backed up with any negate, like you, you should be just good. Yeah. Like you just wait till it's big enough and poke the game. Um, and of course it's always just live straight away. But obviously it's live if your life points are equal, but against Sword Soul, they kinda wanna burn you. Um, and with your punks you'll be paying like six hundred or twelve hundred on first turn, so it's always live, which is really nice. Um, Baron's really strong, obviously it's just really generic, it's a negate, just destruction. It can bring your scythe back in the standby phase if you wanna scythe them on your turn and whatnot. Uh, and the ruler is really just like the linchpin of this deck. Like this is what makes it tick. Yeah, like, it's what ties everything together. Just it's painful choice. Is <laughs> is painful choice? It's not that painful. Yeah, a lot of the time. Not like, that it ever was. The, the thing is, um, so the mills off chaos ruler is like a bonus. You shouldn't be playing this. Your combo shouldn't hinge on what you mill off this. It should be live anyway. Yeah. Anything you see off it is just a bonus. Yeah. And the fact it can summon itself back is always like... Just, it's crazy. Yeah. So one, one thing I think that's important is you want to guarantee a Dark and Light Engrave if you can. So if you're playing your punks and you've just opened the Foxy Tune, when you summon the Zeom in, search the Ogre Dance, then search the Shara Cruise side, don't go straight for the Shara Cruise side, because you don't want to be in the spot you have no Darks Engrave and it's like, oh, my combo's dead. You could have easily avoided it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, we'll play around Droll, but this, this deck doesn't really care about Droll. Like, you'll search once or twice, maybe? If you open with the Therians, you're going to be putting up in the gate. It's not really an issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, like game one, you're, you're not going to see a Droll. So, yeah, just just play the extra. Play without bit, fear. Play, play a little bit extra. And again, it's like getting a brick out of deck, so you don't mill it. Obviously, I'm in 60 cards, but yeah. Uh, and then we'll go for the last few synchros. So we've got the... Uh, one Magician and the Formula Synchronous are uh, help targets. Um, this is for the uh, Baron, this is for the Calamities, or if you have a level 8 on field you can go from this into a Baron, which is what will happen a lot, like um, if your combo is interrupted and you've just ended on like a help on a Regulus, you can use the Regulus in the gate and then get rid of it for this. It's an extra game, the draw is really nice. And I, I remember I talked about this with um, Magician Souls. So uh, usually it'll be like if you have Magician Shoals and another extender, it'll be the Xeomin plus this, uh, into this, and then yeah, it searches the uh, Illusion of Chaos, hits the Grave, which is a nice little bit of extra follow-up. Uh, and then the one fusion we play is the Rising Cup. Again, it's just so that Foxy Tune on its own. So, so Foxy Tune on its own, if you're not playing this, is just summon Xeomin, Xeomin search Ogre Dance, search another Xeomin, yeah. and that's how. But, um, with this, it's Xeomin, so it's Sharakusai, normal that, go into this, and then you bring out Dino and another Xeomin, so it's always, always like any punk, obviously except for Sharakusai on Dino <coughs> and its own, is uh, the uh, Dino Xeomin to Chaos Ruler combo. Uh, we'll move on to our links, so for the big boys, we've got the Access, the Selene, and the Unicorn. Yep. I, I was really happy with my link lineup, I don't think I'd change it at all for this build, like it was perfect. Uh, Selene and Unicorn go into Access to kill. Off the Hulk is just so strong. Yeah, like you can just end games for free. Like if, if there's free spells engraved and you have oh, a way to put a spellcaster on the field, me. you were just good. Like a lot of the time, um, I would like use a Baron negate. It will go back to my turn, standby phase. I'll bring back like the Wonder Magician, um, and then I'd either make the Baron again because the Cypher's probably up. They probably killed the uh, Dagda, or you just go for the uh, Selene and kill. Yeah. Um, and then we have our Link 2s, just the Hulk and the Dagda. I mean, I don't think I need to explain everything about these cards. Nope. <laughs> they, are, they are straight busted. 
Uh, and then the last two cards in the extra, we have our two Link 2s, so the Link Rubo and the Salmon Great Elmirage. This is what we're linking our Plague Spreader and our um, Sangan into. Mm -hmm. And then Link Rebo is just for the Jet Synchron. Or if you have just like a Magician Souls out in the field, and it's like you don't have anything to use it for, you can just make this. A little bit of extra protection is mm -hmm. nice. And yeah, I, I don't think I'd change anything about the extra deck for this build. It's perfect. Like I was mentioning before, like the Shooting Riser just does not come up. I don't yeah. think it's worth playing. With the 40 card Brave version, 100%, because you can easily go through the token and the Xeomin and Shooting Riser and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to our side deck. So we have the Triple Collector, the One Rose Whip, uh, Triple Twister, uh, Triple Evenly, uh, and then 2D Barrier, and Triple Anti Spell Frog going first side. Right. So, um,. The Rose Whip, I always sided in. I never had an opportunity to use it because I was always interrupted before I got to So what's the, what's the play with this then that you're doing? Look, so for me, it's literally just I'm summoning it off Halk and I'm leaving it there. Yeah, just to be annoying. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't activate and Halk doesn't like, blow up an end phase or anything. Um, 1700 defense, which is, is nice. Surprisingly big. Yeah, like if you're playing against um, like Despia um, or Striker, or salad even, yeah. to be honest. Like only one spell trap activation would probably end of the turn. That paired up with a negate. Yeah. And it's also a case like um if you have this up and you're threatening a calamity or a scythe, it's really spooky because if if you um if you're Dark Ruler or your um drop that doesn't go through, it probably is, but if they don't, or like your imperm or your chalice, if that isn't going through the turn's like kind of dead. Yeah. But again it, it just I I didn't see it. I think it was worth playing. Um, but yeah, and then triple token collector. Obviously, I'm not playing shooting riser, so I don't have an easy way to dump this. Yeah, like, foolish. But yeah, and I'm playing 60, so I want to see it as much as possible. Like, if I can, I'll mill it off a ruler. You can pitch it off Foxy um, in your hand or a Chet Uh And because I, so because I was playing 60, like I can't afford to go like just free cards for a certain matchup. I need to go all in. So we're playing the triple twister and the triple evenly for back row and for like despia yeah. going second. Um, also twister is an, another way to pitch Furions. Like that, I, that was a big thing for me I was having trouble with at first is just making the Furion engine actually live. Yeah. Um, but I think I kind of figured it out. And then again for going first it's like... So D barrier, it was either, it was either two and three or two and three and I thought I, I naturally have Scythe so D barrier isn't as big. And I'd rather have the free anti spell because if I can flip that and stop a droplet or a dark ruler from uh, interrupting my combo, I'd rather have that. And spells insane. Yeah, anti. Yeah, I, I and I think that was correct in retrospect by yeah. dropping that for the, the uh, rose whip. But um, the biggest problem I'd say I had with the event is all my losses were to Despia, and um, I, I kind of didn't consider the matchup. Like I did, I didn't think about how strong uh, opening and. Branded in red, like all these quick play spells before I get to actually do my side block or my clam tease lock would be. And I was really scared of Sword Soul, so I kind of tuned my deck and my side to fight Sword Soul mm -hmm. more than Despia, and I think that kind of is what screwed me in because out of my four Despia matches, I only won one, and it was a bit of a weird build. I mean, I'll be honest, I think that the Despia matchup. Most people thought it had largely gone away, yeah, and it was actually so, super represented it, at the event. It's, it's the case where a good player of the deck will do a lot more than... Um, Most are terrible with it. Yeah, 100%. Exactly. But the good resourceful players are insane with it. Yes, yes. It's kind of like Striker in that respect. Like, yeah. I, I played Despia for two regionals and I hated it. Like, it's yeah. just not how... It's it's not a deck that works with my play style. Like, I, I've gone back to combo, which... For the longest time, I like didn't want to play combo because it just felt like dirty. But I think I've just found out now that is what I'm most comfortable with. So I'm gonna stick with this. I'm probably gonna swap to a uh, forty card version. I also tried the brave version again. I tried the brave version at first, um, but it just felt kind of clunky because mm -hmm. um, you couldn't really afford to play Sharaku side because obviously you can't use normal effects under right. It just made some of your hands a bit clunkier. Um, like I was saying, with this, the way I built this deck, I wanted as many hands to be as live as possible, especially when playing 60. Yeah. And I think it was for the best. Like, I felt really comfortable with the deck, I was really confident, and it worked out in the end, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's about all I have to say. I could talk for like half an hour, but I don't think <laughs> All Joe, the theory. I don't think Joe would want to render and upload that, so. <laughs> Alright, fair enough. 
Okay, so I think you've covered some of the changes you would have made and all of that. So let's go straight to it. Any shout outs you'd like to make? Uh, so, first big shout out to uh, the Jam Jam Cards crew for um, yes, just, just being good testing partners, for sorting me out with a lot of the cards for this deck. And yeah, just, just being good friends. And then. Um, I guess shout out to Manus Group, it's like the best locals. Like, yes, sir. Just no contest. And again, really good testing grounds. I don't think I'd be anywhere near as competent as a player as I am. I'm confident in calling myself competent. It's crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I'd be anywhere near as good a player as I was if I wasn't playing down here because there is like genuine competition. Like people are trying to get good. Yeah. Which is nice. They're in James's boot. Uh, shout out to all my friends. Like uh, my friend Robert Lane, he he's the one who like got me into the game. Like I collected when I was a kid. Where is that guy? I know it's crazy. Well, I don't know. He's he's lurking. He's gonna come back and destroy. Oh, okay. Just you wait. Infernoids will rise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the biggest shout out is gonna be to my partner Lewis. Like oh. I, I like as come much on, as I said it. about minus screw, I would not be a good player without him. Very cute. <laughs> um, yeah, he he like gave me that competitive spirit yeah, that I just yeah, didn't yeah. have before. Like, he really gave me that drive to do well. And I wanted to... I felt kind of bad after my two regionals because we were both playing Death Spear and it's like, we weren't enjoying it. And I was like, I want to, I want to like, prove that I can do at least half decent an event. And I think I've... And you've done very well. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm just really happy that I did as well. I did the event. It could have gone better. It could have gone a lot worse. Um, could indeed. But the most important thing is that I want to continue improving. Good stuff. All right, well, thank you very much for taking the time to the no profile. Problem. Congratulations on getting into kind of the top, uh, kind top, of the top, top kind of top ish. Get some extra prizes and that. Yeah. That's pretty good, right? Sorry if I got a bit weepy at the end. <laughs> No, you're all good. You're all good. Well, thank you. Thanks again for taking the time to do profile review. Share it. Guys, if you haven't already, you should most definitely hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. 